Today, I'm going to present on shock assessment by focus. Thank you very much for your attention. Disclosures is as shown. The concept of focus is simplicity. Focus is an ultrasonography as an extension of the physical exams. That is like stethoscope. Limiting the number of evaluation items and clarifying evaluation criteria are key points of focus. It's to reduce learning difficulty and maintain test quality. There are a few things to keep in my mind when doing focus. Focus is one of the findings and it's not a definitive test. It's important to use combined with history and physical examinations. If the focus findings clearly differ from the diagnosis based on the history and physical examinations, consider additional other tests. There is no need to stick with focus findings. Focus is distinguished from comprehensive ultrasonography. It's a method for screening at the bedside. Today, we have only 20 minutes, so I'm going to omit the details of the method of each domain. For example, focus, lung, DVT ultrasound, and abdominal ultrasound. The objective of this lecture is to get an idea of how focus is used in shock assessment. When we do shock assessment by focus, we usually use following four domains. Focus, lung ultrasound, vascular ultrasound of lower extremities, and abdominal ultrasound. We can shorten time and increase certainty of shock assessment by using focus. This is a checklist for each domain in the shock assessment. As for focus, we check LV contractility, RV enlargement, IVC diameter, and pericardial fluid. For rank, a line, B line, lung sliding, and the plural fluid. In some cases, C profile, pneumonia may be checked. For vascular ultrasound, we check the DVT of lower extremities to check the risk of pulmonary embolism. For abdomen, mainly screening for causes of septic shock or hypovolemic shock. For example, Triple A rupture, cholecystitis, CBD dilatation as a collateral for cholangitis, hydronecrosis, bladder distension as a collateral for obstructive UTI, and unsuspected ascites, etc. This figure shows the four taxonomies of shock assessment. First, we evaluate for cardiogenic and obstructive shock. The reasons are that the treatments are very different and they are more urgent. Next, we evaluate hypovolemic shock and distributive shock. These conditions are absolute relative intravascular volume loss. Of course, if the cause of the shock is obvious, treat the cause regardless of this flow. Now, I will start with an assessment of tension numerous rocks that is included in obstructive category. The diagnosis of tension numerous rocks is shock and hypoxia and risk factors and physical exams. Risk factors include for example, a history of trauma, ventilator, etc. 
Basically, if the vital signs are unstable, we should promptly do thrusting tests without imaging tests for diagnosis. If we can do a quick ultrasonography, checking lung sliding helps you to perform thrusting tests more confidently. If lung sliding is positive, we can rule out pneumothorax. If lung sliding is absent, pneumothorax or other abnormal conditions are present. Tension pneumothorax has no lung sliding. These are the lung ultrasonography movies. Left side is lung sliding positive. Right side is lung sliding negative. This case is pneumothorax. Next, I will show an assessment of cardiac tamponade in obstructive category. Pericardial fluid is measured at the depth where it accumulates the most. The appropriate view to be measured is prax if spine. Depth gives an estimate of the amount of pericardial fluid, like this table. The point is that a large amount of pericardial fluid is not necessarily a cardiac tamponade. Even a small amount of pericardial fluid can cause cardiac tamponade if it accumulates rapidly. And a large amount of fluid may not cause cardiac tamponade if it accumulates slowly. It is important not to rule out the possibility of cardiac tamponade if there is even a small amount of pericardial fluid, when the shock case with a history that should not have pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid is sometimes difficult to distinguish from pleural fluid. The first step in distinguishing it is to identify the descending aorta in a prax view. The fluid that close to the heart side from the descending aorta is pericardial fluid, and the fluid that leaves the heart side is pleural fluid. This is subcostal four chamber view. This view has high sensitivity to pericardial fluid. It is also important that this view is easy to acquire. Next, I will show an assessment of pulmonary embolism in obstructive category. As for pulmonary embolism, we check focus, vascular of lower extremities, and lung. Check for IBC tension and RB extension by focus. Vascular ultrasound, rule out the DVT by compression test. I will show you about compression test later. Normal pattern of lung ultrasound. A profile of blue protocols and hypoxia is one of the character of pulmonary embolism. Focus allows rapid screening before contrast enhanced CAT scan. These three views are PRAX, PSAX, and Apical 4 Chamber View. All of them are from the same pulmonary embolism case. As you may have noticed, the RB dilatation is not clear in PRAX. In PSAX and apical 4 chamber view, 
RV is enlarged beyond the LV. Only part of the RV is observed at flux. So RV dilatation should not be excluded even if the RV is not dilated by flux. Compression test is an easy method to evaluate DVT. A linear probe is used to compress veins of five regions from the site to popliteal fossa. If the veins completely collapsed by compression test, there is no DVT. DVT evaluation with focus is limited to the site to popliteal fossa. As thrombus below the knee are not a risk for pulmonary embolism. Arteries and veins are differentiated by shape, size, wall thickness, pulse, and compression test. In a typical case, there is no doubt. But if you are not sure about the distinction between arteries and veins, check these five findings. These are the movie of compression test. Left side is thrombus negative. Vein is completely collapsed by compression. Right side is thrombus positive. Note that new clots may not be clearly visible on ultrasonography. Compared to color Doppler and plus Doppler ultrasonography, Diagnostic accuracy of compression test is equivalent. Next is cardiodynamic shock assessment by focus. Cardiodynamic shock can be easily evaluated in three categories, myocardial, valve, and heart rate. Cardiac output is consists of stroke volume and heart rate. Heart rate is checked by ECG monitor. You check the myocardial abnormality and valve abnormality by focus. As for valve, focus does not evaluate valve details. Only a gross evaluation is performed. As for myocardial abnormality, you evaluate contractility on the four-point scale. Ejection fraction is not measured by focus. This is a method to evaluate contractility. There are three checkpoints. First is endocardial excursion. All end cardio uniformly contracted inward. Second is myocardial thickening. Myocardium thicken more than 40% in systole. Third is septal motion of anterior leaflet of mitral valve. It gets closer to septum until less than 1 cm in diastole. Ejection fraction is not measured by focus. LB contractivity is evaluated by the presence of these three points. If these three points are present, contractivity is normal. If these three points plus LB wall kissing in systole, it's called hyperdynamic. If any of three is absent, it's called reduced. Severely reduced is less than reduced. The boundary between reduced and severely reduced is approximately 30% in EF. This method is used in flux view.
How about the contractility of this case? First, all end cardiac uniformly contracted inward. Second, myocardium thickened more than 40% in systole. Third, anterior leaflet of mitral valve gets closer to septum until less than 1 cm in diastole. So, this case is normal contractility. How about this case? First, endocardial excursion, negative. Second, myocardial thickening over 40%, negative. Third, anterior leaflet of mitral valve does not get closer to septum until less than 1 cm. So this case is severely reduced. There are several methods of lung ultrasonography, such as 3, 4, or 6 points to be scanned for one lung. But all of them are not so much different. So any of them will do. In this time, we will introduce the four-point method. The four locations are second intercostal mid-calvicular line, fifth intercostal anterior axillary line, eighth and ninth intercostal mid-axillary line. It's above the diaphragm, and the dorsal side of the same intercostal space. The important thing is to evaluate the entire lung by sliding headward or caudally, not just at the location. The probe can be linear or sector. Plural edema is assessed by the presence of B-line. The B-line is an artifact seen in fluid retention or inflammation. It's called ring down artifact. Three or more B lines in a single intercostal space is called multiple B lines, a finding that suggests fluid retention in the alveoli. Bilateral diffuse B lines plus lung sliding has high sensitivity and specificity for pulmonary edema. The sensitivity is 97% and the specificity is 95%. Last part is distributive and hypovolemic shock. Area pressure can be estimated by IBC diameter and the rate of change of IBC diameter by sniffing. The table shows the estimated area pressure. The most useful part of this table is that if the IBC has collapsed, there is an intravascular volume loss. For other findings, area pressure can be estimated, but it is important to note that area pressure does not equal intravascular volume. Focus is somewhat useful in screening the cause of shock. For example, Unexpected or cloudy ascites suggest intra-abdominal infection or vascular injury. The presence of an abdominal aortic aneurysm can be easily assessed by POCUS. POCUS should be used as a screening tool, and additional tests should be considered. These are take-home message. Thank you very much for your attention.